Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We had our initial Lynx Coding Club meeting this morning, and I just wanted to create a quick video just to review what we went over so that we had it available as resources. So to begin with, uh, Lynx Coding, you go to lynxcoding.club, and if we click there, it brings us to this window here. Now, if this is the first time you, you've ever done Lynx Coding, You'll notice up here that you won't have a name. Uh, it'll actually ask for a login. And so you would log in, hit the login button, and you would want to select your OCSB student or your OCSB account as your Google account. And that will give you authorization to go in and establish your account. And so the first thing that I want you to be understand about Lynx coding is Lynx coding is a cloud-based programming environment. And it's done without all the idiosyncrasies of other languages such as Python and JavaScript. And so if we think in terms of a continuum where you have, for example, Scratch or Mindstorms or Blockly, which is that or Hour of Code, which is what we know as visual programming, it's that basic level. And then you have that advanced level where you're getting into HTML, C++, JavaScript, Python, and so on. And what Lynx Coding discovered was there is this intermediate level that doesn't really exist, that you're going from a basic level with that visual programming right to the advanced level. And so Lynx Coding wanted to fill that gap and bridge that gap. And so it's actually the creators of Scratch who between the MIT Media Lab and the organization out of Montreal that are originally created Scratch back in the 80s, they're the, also the same ones who have created Lynx Coding now. And so they've used that Scratch format. They're applying the logo language to create that bridge factor. And so, that's really what we're looking at here, is it's an intermediate coding aspect. And so in this particular case, I want to go ahead and we're gonna go right to my projects. And I wanna show you very quickly, within my projects, this is what we were working on today. Was this, this is the story that I was working on. You'll notice as well that some of my options is I can download it, I can delete it, I can even share it. And so if I hit my share button, I can, for example, create the URL, have my description here. And so that's where I would put my URL in. And so there's, there's the link. And so I can just copy the link if I wanted to, or I can email it to whoever it is that I wanted to share with. And so if I wanted to go back and actually take a look at how, what was it that I did today, we're gonna walk you through it very quickly. So we call this visual storytelling because it really is creating those elements involved in the story. We're gonna create our setting, we're going to get our characters and we're going to begin our adventure. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I go into my project. I'm going to call this my screen castify project. I'm going to click down here. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create my background. And so I'm going to go into my sample clip art. Let's go to my backgrounds. I'm going to pick this house. You'll notice that the number on it is 10. So now I'm going to go to my workspace and I'm going to put in set shape space 10, enter. And now I have my background. And so, but you'll notice that my background right now is dynamic. It's moving around. And so I want to actually make it static. So to hit it, hit static, I'm going to hit stamp, and by hitting stamp, 
I actually have two backgrounds now, the static one and the dynamic one. And so that static one, I'm going to put in set shape space zero. And now I get my turtle character back. And so you'll notice in this particular case, I've got my background, but my turtle can move. And so I have my setting and now I have my character. And in this particular case, if, if I wanted to, for example, change my turtle to a different character, again, I'm gonna to come to my plus, I'm gonna to come to my sample clip art, and I'm gonna jump, jump down to people. And let's see, I have, what do I have here? Uh, I have this young lad here. Maybe I'll put him in. And so in this particular case, I'm going to go set shape 38. Now I have him. He's pretty big, though. He's almost as big as the house. So I'm going to go set size 20. And now that's a lot closer to the type of character that I want to have. So I want to do stamp. And in this particular case, if I drag him around, I actually have two characters here where I copied them. And I'm going to go to set shape zero. Turtle back so I can move them around, and both these guys now are static. So I have twins living at this house, and so it's at this point this is basically how far along we got in terms of uh, our lesson for today. We got our account set up, we got our backgrounds put in, we got our characters put in. The last thing we did though was we also put in our dialogue, and so I went to my plus button. I went to text, and I get this dialogue button to come up. And so I'm going to say, hello, welcome to Links Camp. If I wanted to change some of this, I can change my box. I can move it. I can actually, if I click here, if I right click, I can uh, we're gonna call them the Johnson twins. I'm gonna show the name. And so I've got my text in place. You'll notice then finally, this is not an auto save. And so you'll notice that my save button is actually my upload button right here. That red dot tells me I've gone too long without saving. And so I wanna make sure every time that red dot shows up, I wanna make sure I'm jumping over here and saving. And so I'm gonna save the project. Hopefully my Wi-Fi is going to behave for me. And we're saving. And so at this point, the next time I come into my account, if I go to my projects, this one will be here as well. And so that really is completes lesson one for us. The, th the part that's really neat about all of this, I find, is uh, next week's lesson, we're gonna be looking at how we actually create movement now. So my Johnson twins, I can actually program them where they would be walking down the road, uh, turning around, 
interacting with different people, including the turtle and so on. The other thing that's really cool is these empty boxes that exist right now. This is where I can actually put my own images in. So if I was, just like in Google Slides, if I was to take a camera, take a picture of my room or a picture of my house, upload it into Google Drive, and then come here, I can download from Google Drive that image right into this box and insert it within my screen, just like I would do with Google Slides. And so there's a lot of different options of things that we can do. There's certainly, uh, well, if you get into the uh, tutorials, they go into a lot more explanation of the different things that you can have here. One question that comes up is, what if I want to undo something? Well, let's say I want to get rid of my twins. So I'm actually just going to highlight the line that pertains to the twin. I'm going to delete it there. And then I'm going to hit that button. Let me my text box in this case. I'm going to do that. Well, maybe not. I guess not. I guess my guys are pretty static there at this point. So anyways, that's one way in terms of how we can um, undo some of our work and so on. So I hope that helps. Thank you very much.